On today's show, we look back at Ireland versus Wales in Millennium Stadium. We've got some rumours straight from the grapevine from our Penguins on Joe Smith's 31-man squad. Yeah, we're also going to discuss your typical reactions whenever your six-foot-eight friend gets attacked by a dildo at Electric Picnic. Do you let people touch your baby? And does Felix Jones hate Irish rugby as much as he hates endangered species? Joe presents Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby, together with Guinness. Hello and you're very welcome to Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby here on Joe, together with Guinness. On today's show, Ireland finally shows some signs of maturity after sprouting a few pubes uh, in their 22-17 <laughs> win over Wales and Cardiff on Saturday. Our expert in that field, Jerry Flannery, will be on shortly uh, to give us his input. Uh, Joe Smith has selected his 31-man panel for the World Cup, yet to be announced. Um, but, but we know. We know. We know. We know some We stuff. think we know. Yeah. Thanks to all our penguins on the ground who have been sending us messages with rumours straight from the grapevine uh, about who has made the cut and who has not. Uh, so thank you to all our penguins. Uh, just on that note, please, uh, while you're sending us all these details and these uh, messages, don't forget to rate and review the show. Uh, Spat McCarry, our producer over here. Uh, <laughs> you've had a few comments come in. You might lob them our way later on in the show. Have you had any spats this weekend on Twitter? Uh, no, it's kind of just been defense. Oh, there's just a lot of kind of team selection stuff, isn't there? Like somebody else would be on Twitter in a thread, like slagging Devon Toner, and because I'm tagged in it. Then I'm called a clown. I'm like, hey, <laughs> someone I think called you a clown. <laughs> well, hashtag clowns. <laughs> oh. I was like, I think Devin Tone is a great player. You know, like, I think he's a handy yeah, player. Yeah. Like, so um, stuff like that. It's getting. It's going to start getting very weird. I wonder if it's going to start getting provincial when the the final squad gets announced and very true. what yeah. the breakdown is. How was Skate Cup for you this weekend? Good, good. Did well. Back did, in your good books. Yeah, it did. Like he, he got caught out by that crossfield kick, but it was a brilliant crossfield kick by Jared Evans. Like, and then Addison was there to was he clean a up from but. Um, nah. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, ah, brilliant. And that, as I said, like yeah, sixteen tries for him now in twenty-one tests. Like so, just one away from Trimby now in the top ten. One away from me 10. and about 55 less caps. <laughs> are, you in that, are you in the top 10, yeah? Uh, oh, yeah, geez, if you score 15 tries, you're in the top 10. Rog is in the top 10. He is not. He's drawn level with Rog. He's level with right, Rog, yeah. yeah. No, I suppose, yeah. Yeah. How, how many do you have? Uh, 17. That's great. Yeah, it's, it's great. Well but done. I have one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you maybe Your ratio them. might be better. How many well, caps would be? One and four. <laughs> Someone work that out. It's around the same. No, no, maybe yours is... Oh, I'm better than you. Shit. My ratio is better. <laughs> Unlucky. You're better than me on all parts. I wonder how many flies. 68. That'd be 68 caps. Oh, 68. You probably have more than that, I don't know. 70, yeah. He's all right, move along, move along, move along. We don't need to stay there. Uh, I also want to talk to you about Felix Jones and him moving to South Africa <coughs> at the coaching ticket. Uh, but less of the formalities. How was your weekend? Grand. Grand only? Grand. Yeah, grand. Yeah. Well, just by comparison, I saw your Instagram video. Yeah, uh, of the the electric picnic. The electric picnic. <laughs> yeah, not not just no the yeah. acoustic picnic. It was good. I got a few rare hours off uh, on Saturday evening. Yeah, did your I dad um, show for you? My dad drove me up. Yeah. yeah, what a legend. Yeah, um, he was like having him there. I, I think people kept thinking he was in the drug squad or something. Like he was undercover <laughs> cop, <laughs> just wandering around with his little backpack on. <laughs> Even one of my mates was like, "Who's the narc?" And I was like. That's my dad, man. He's like, oh shit, Mick, how's it going? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was good crack. Yeah. It's really cool. And uh, I was sad that I had to leave at 12 o'clock. I'm sure. Back to, it's, it's back to reality. Yeah, back to porridge. I was trying to come in after a few <laughs> pints at three o'clock in the morning and help with the feed. Uh, and I was just told swiftly to get out. <laughs> get out, you're used to it. I was like, yeah! <laughs> Bring in my banter. Uh, but no, she was having less, none of us. Yeah, shout out to my dad. What a hero. Yeah. Me up. Mm. Did he did he get Fla left as well? No, Fla no, was, was up there, but he uh he went himself. So yeah. my dad also um on Saturday morning I had a little bit of a sleep in, like from six in the morning till ten. And when I got up he was downstairs with Mick the baby in his hands. And I was like, and he was there, well. And I had a rough night Friday night with, with Mick the baby. He was screaming. And uh, you didn't have a rough night with Mick the granddad. <laughs> Mick the granddad was grand. But he was like, uh, uh, 
this is easy, isn't it, holding Mick the baby? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, look at him, he's a doddle. Two hands, granddad. <laughs> <laughs> I was there, where were you at three o'clock in the morning when he was screaming the house down? And my dad looked at me and he goes, where were you at three o'clock in the morning 30 years ago when I was pacing the floor with you, screaming? Oh, jeez. And I could have slapped you off the feckin' wall. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, give me back the baby. <laughs> give me my baby. He was like holding him by one leg. See, at he point. went there. It sounds like he was in good form one minute and then. Yeah. But I suppose he's bottled that up like yeah. for so long. He's never really said that to me. But he had to. Do you know when you're wiping your kid's ass, you're like, I'm going to use this against you forever. Yeah. Whereas he hasn't. So I, I often tried to explain, like whenever I was, I was like cl cleaning their ass or like changing their nappy, and they're cracking up and they're you're squirming. You might not have got to that stage yet. Squirming stage is a nightmare, <laughs> and you've got them by the legs like this, and they're, they're, <laughs> they're, just, they're, turning, they're on their front. And you're like, <laughs> trying to turn them around, and you're going, "I'm help me, help you. <laughs> I'm trying to help you here. They're trying you're to get trying as to much shit on their body as yeah. they possibly can." Yeah. Wow. No, I haven't gotten that point yet. Yeah. And I'm still quite passive. Yeah, I had a bit of a, a, baby, a nappy disaster at a wedding on Saturday as well. I had to change the entire outfit. Oh, it was curry chip territory again. With it, was the Katie in a tux like? or a No, she had a tuxedo. <laughs> what was she wearing? Um, you just to change we, your outfit or her outfit? No, her outfit. Her outfit. No, okay. no. Uh, I know mine was, had shit on it, but I just kept just it. Kept going, yeah. Right? Uh, no, it was just a, a bunny rabbit and a wee frilly dress. <laughs> <laughs> but she was wearing. Yeah. <laughs> wedding attire. Um, that sounds like good. You had a wedding and brought the kids. Yeah, but I was, doing, I was doing that perfect dad routine. I was walking around with, with Katie in a, a sling, a front oh, sling. Nice. Conversation started. Using her as a buffer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 As a reason to leave conversations. Yes, but also it, it's actually a, a pothole attraction. Oh, is it? Yeah. Do they want to come over and yeah. touch her and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you get weird when people touch your baby? Depends. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It does. Uh, on that note, we uh, we get fleas out and start talking about absolutely some rugby. Okay, we'll take a quick break. and We'll be back with Jerry. Okay, welcome back, and we're joined in the couch by Jerry Flannery. Welcome, Jerry. Thank you. Welcome. Um, yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, I didn't catch you a picnic, actually. Not that you were performing. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you have a good, good weekend? I did. It was really good. We got a babysitter for the day, so my seven Katie went up. We went up and down on the day, so. Favourite act? Um, <clears throat> Maverick Sabre was really good. Mm. Can't really remember anyone else. No. Of no... Well, I was at the 1975, but I thought there were, it was piss and rain and it was probably, it was getting towards the end of the day. Mm. I spent most of my day wandering around, getting food and talking shit to people. Yeah, the food was good. Very good. Yeah. Um, who did I enjoy? Uh, Christine in the Queens, did you like her? Never heard of her. Very good. Um, Uproot Hoot Nanny. It's very good that I've never heard of her. No, that's terrible. You need to up your coolness. Listen to this is like a little, st a little podium for you to just say how much cooler you are than everyone else <laughs> yeah. by talking about bands that <laughs> you can be making them up like yeah. Jimmy and the Dog Suckers. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> I've never Sucker. heard it. <laughs> That's the best I could come up with. So. I hate name for a band. Uh, yeah. band. Naming a band is hard. It took us months to... Jimmy and the Dog Suckers. To name a band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it took me like it's cool it 30 it. seconds. Yeah. Not even... <laughs> Um, anything else? Anything else happened at the picnic? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I was due to do the... Richie Sadlier was on to me about doing his podcast, uh, The Player's Chair, I think it's called, and I couldn't get up in time. We couldn't get a babysitter early enough to allow us to get up in time to do it, so <clears throat> I think Paul, uh, Paul O'Connell did it then. So I met him. When I got up there, I, I knew he'd be at it. <laughs> So, what are you laughing at? Because I knew what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> we've and, we've uh, tried to preempt this. Any stories? Yeah. Terribly. Yeah. Terribly. Yeah. And, Tell uh, him the story. So, I, te I text Paulie then and I said, oh, because I knew the show was at one o'clock. I got up around, maybe around quarter to three or something like that. So, I text him and said, are you still around? And he goes, yeah, yeah, I came up. And he was up uh, with, with uh, his family 
and um and emily so i said oh i said we're over by the main stage come over and uh, have a drink and he said well we're not going to spend a lot of time here but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <do> it. <laughs> it's just it, the, it, the image is in my mind now okay. as i'm telling the story and uh he said, Where are you? I, said, I said i'm done with the food trucks at the back at the main stage come down he's like okay and then i saw him wander over and i was chatting to him and i said well he's our He's like, I'm, I'm looking to get out of here now because everyone was coming up to him all the time like, oh, can we get a picture? Can we get a picture? <laughs> and um, so I was sitting there chatting away. It was a good laugh. And um, I was, there was these young fellas that were over there, kind of a group of young fellas standing, staring at him. And um, <laughs> I was chatting there. Next minute, one of them walked over and just goes like this, goes boom, and just stuck this thing in his forehead. And I, I looked at the young fella and then I turned around and it was like, I said, is that? <laughs> Polly pulled it off. <laughs> It was a plastic, it was a purple dildo that he'd stuck onto his forehead. And your man was kind of, it was like this standoff where I was there with a drinking man and I was like, what? What the fuck just happened there? And Paul was there, he just pulled it off and then he was examining it. And he was like, oh, it's a purple dildo. And he's and he like, <laughs> threw, it, threw it miles away. And then as it, as it then your, the, your man was like, he just, what you throw it away for him? Paul was like, what you stick it on my forehead for? And he then, was offended. Yeah, your man was pissed off that, that O'Connell threw the dildo away. Imagine me like the end of Braveheart when Hamish <laughs> lobs the sword. <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. It wasn't, it Slobs wasn't, the dildo it wasn't just like, sticks on someone's head. <laughs> <laughs> a chin reaction. I just <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't uh, it's bouncing to, around just, the mid Just for clarity, it wasn't like wobbly. Do you know what I mean? It was. It wasn't. Yeah, I know exactly what they were doing. <laughs> it wasn't particularly thick. Your classic. It would just be like it was. It was. It was. It was light. Yeah. But it was. It was prominent in its erect. angle. Yeah, it was erect. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Flaccid dildos are probably no good. But um, yeah, and. <laughs> I don't know. It was it was really weird, and I didn't know what way to react. Then, because when 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 they walked away, I could see them all, and we were like, "Oh fuck, that was kind of a dick move." And I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I didn't even mean that." But I was like, "Fuck, a little prick," and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "But uh, okay," I was like <coughs> thinking, "Oh man, sh should I should should I box that guy?" And then I was like. But you can't be that loaded that you think that something <laughs> no. like that's going to happen. Well, you can't yeah. anticipate that. Yeah, gonna yeah. Because what if they just like, you know, I, I don't know. Like, a, it's just it's the, it's sure you're, the, never, you're never going to expect that to happen. Like, you never expect it to be a, a, a purple dildo. Oh, you'll know yeah. for next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope it doesn't become a thing now where it's like kids start going, oh, this is really cool. And they all start doing it. Oh, every time they see Paula Connell, they're like, <laughs> like, do you want transfer deadline day when it, <laughs> <laughs> that he's doing transfer deadline there. <laughs> that he's it's constantly happening like so he's like just has loads of dicks no he's just like after head. a while it's just so like look it's just <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's like, not working like you have four four. <laughs> 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 the ball guy from Hellraiser with just all these dicks sticking out of his head uh, yeah <laughs> okay well we can move on we can move oh, on from that great. was he was he ratty was he was he oh yeah, we we're both. We we're both, like, we were, it, it, it because it was so because it was so weird when it happened. We we're like, Did that just fucking happened. Such an aggressive move, like, and because you can't place it on the head. Like, it's no, be no, like, you've because you've got to get the suction. So you've got to you got to lick it <laughs> underneath the skin, <laughs> <laughs> and then onto the forehead. And then it was like, I was like, what? What did he just do to him there? And then it was like, boom, Paul took it off, and it was when the ex when he examined it that and it was like. What is this? And then looked at the guy, you know. <laughs> In the year of our Lord, 2019. Patrons of Ireland, starving and outnumbered, charged the fields of electric picnic. <laughs> I'm just thinking of some other guy just lying on the index. <laughs> <laughs> Him reaching out, what is this? Uh, uh, yeah, so that was it. That was uh, the picnic. It was good. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll come, back to, uh, come back to that, I'm sure, throughout. Uh, Here, speaking of dicks, is there, is there any updates on Stringer? Uh, is there any backlash? I got a text off him. He just said I was a dickhead. 
Um, <laughs> you said no. Connell's a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> that was no. He texted me on the straight after the show, so I didn't the O'Connell thing. I didn't I didn't know about mm. until it happened. Um, he defend himself. <laughs> strings. Yeah. No, he just texted me uh, and just said, "You're such a dickhead." And then um, yeah, to be fair. Yeah, I don't know. There has been no no update. I don't think. I don't as in, know. as in. We still don't know if he has a dick or not. <laughs> I don't he's not know. upset. He's okay about it. Well, he didn't. He didn't try and clarify anything. So <laughs> yeah. maybe, we, maybe he will after this show. So the jury's still out. <laughs> the jury is still out. Yeah, yeah. It's still, it's still a little bit ambi- still a bit of ambiguity <laughs> around it. Yeah. All right, Ireland versus Wales on oh, Saturday. <clears throat> mm. Got to get down to it. Um, do you want to hear the penguin rumors? Well, yeah. Will we go with the squad first, then come back to the game. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Penguin <clears throat> rumors. Bang room, uh, uh, highlights, uh, one-liners, McGrath over Marmion. McGrath, McGrath has been picked over Marmion. This yeah. is a rumour floating this around. This is a, a penguin rumour. Klein, Klein over Toner. That's bigger. Klein over Toner. Well, they're both they're, they're, they're both big calls. Yeah. yeah. Um, Roddick over Murphy. Uh, okay. That was kind of a toss-up anyway, wasn't it? Suppose, anyway. Yeah. Uh, Addison over Larmer. Yeah. Or Addison over um, Farrell. Okay. Um, uh, Herring over Cronin. That last one has been rubbished. <laughs> has it? Yeah, by another penguin. Uh, Two penguins, penguins cancelling each other out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A few big calls there. If, even if two or three of those are mm-hmm. right. Mm. Yeah. Go to the first one, Marmion. Yeah. <clears throat> McGrath versus Marmion. Okay, what are your thoughts on that? Top Marmion was good at the weekend. Yeah. Thought he had a... McGrath did really well when he came on. Yeah, yeah. But it would seem strange that... Joe would start Marmion if he didn't have the intention and he didn't do anything wrong to change his mind. Mm. Mm. I thought Marmion made a, made a <coughs> he had a massive clean when Bundiaki made that line break um, off, off Kilcoyne's offload. Marmion had an unbelievable clean there. He, he forced a turnover and I thought he was pretty tidy with how he played. McGrath, when he came on, <coughs> saved the try. So, yeah, but I, I would have thought the pecking order would have been Marmion ahead of McGrath, but... That's okay. what it looked like, and that's what it's mm. been for the last while. Yeah, mm. but I think those two are really good for each other. They tend to bring each other on because Marmion obviously played well, and then Luke maybe felt under pressure to produce a big one. And he did made that try saving mm. tackle on the line, worked hard. That probably, well, it's kind of it's always been Marmion anyway. That would be a surprise, I think. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Mm. The next one you had uh, Klein versus Toner, or Klein ahead of Toner. Sorry. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big, big call. I, the one thing John John Klein brings is he will be more physical than any other player in the in the Irish in the Irish pack. It's not like for like though, because no, he doesn't not. call, does he? No, he's not. He's not a lineup <laughs> caller. But I think maybe after the fact that Peter Manny is uh, look, I, I don't know. Like I, I would have thought that that bringing John that that John had, had I thought he'd done reasonably well, you know, to get up to speed. Um, in a short space of time, I thought he'd done reasonably well. He showed his physicality, um, how he can mix it there. And that's where we got exposed against England massively. Um, so that's what he has probably, that's probably has what he has edging it in his favour if, if, he, if he is to go. So the you, fact that he's, you, a, would, he's, he's a specialist, he's a specialist front line. Would, would <coughs> Klein and James Ryan work well in the second row together? Who calls? I, 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 think, I, think it's, I think it's James Ryan or Jean Klein to start. Yeah. And I think that James Ryan is is because of his work rate, because of what he's done. I think he's 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 your starter mm. as as your uh, as your front lock, and then you have like you have like Ian, Ian Henderson or you have Toner or you have Byrne as as your as your caller then, mm. and then you, one of those guys is on the bench then because if you if you put John on the bench, you're bringing him on. It's it's not he's not so much, he's a guy you want to start because mm. of the ballast he gives you in the scrum. And Has the he mall. done enough? Do you reckon? Like, do you think he's? I, I, I would have been surprised. I think yeah. I, I look. I've worked with him, so I, I love him as a player. I think yeah. he's a great player. I just think that it, he had the, the window was so tight for him to try and impress to the point where he can get on the plane. Mm-hmm. Um, I would be surprised. I'd be very surprised if Devon Toner was left out mm-hmm. off the back of because you know how, how when Joe trusts people. It seems that he, he he continues to back them, you know. And I think Toner, because of the way he's ca- he calls the lineouts as well. Yeah, that's the most shocking one for me there. How yeah. reliable are these <clears throat> penguins? Um, not that reliable. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> that's good. It's e- good. Even one or two of the penguins, one guy in particular, said that he hadn't, like, he'd only heard it from one source. So okay. they wouldn't stand over these. Okay. 
But here, <laughs> that's what penguins are for. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Okay, go for the next one. Um, Roddick versus Murphy. Roddick ahead of him. <clears throat> Apparently. Yeah, I thought Jordy Murphy was going to go because of his versatility. Um, um, but I think if you look at playing Peter Armani at seven at the weekend, playing Ty Burn at six, it possibly allows you to to go with Ruddock, who's potentially considered more of a specialist uh, over Jordy Murphy. Um, <coughs> yeah, yeah, I'd be... Yeah, next. Um, Addison versus Larmer. Let's get on to Addison. Oh. Big fan of the show. Yeah. yeah. Like we're when we're it, a big fan of his. When it boils down to, the, to your 31... Uh, for me, a lot of them are, are are a given. Like I think we'd all agree, probably on the front rows that are going right. Mm. Um, we don't need to go through. Is it, a hook, hooker is a little bit the third choice hooker. Third choice hooker, I think, because third choice or your third hooker. Yeah, I think Best and Scanlon are going to go, and then between Herring and Cronin. Because Herring hasn't played. Yeah, I think it has to be Cronin. Mm. But Cronin um, hasn't played either. He's, he played um, <coughs> twenty minutes against England. Yeah. So. Like but it, it's it, but, 20 but, minutes he started. Yeah, I think it's just off the back of what Sean has done. So would you? Yeah, it's more that. What would your that. choice be? No, uh, yeah, put your cock in the block now. Yeah. Uh, my, I think the expected choice is probably Scannell, Rory Scannell. I Rory Scannell, the centre, Rory, Rory, Rory Scannell. Pick him. <laughs> <laughs> Rory Scannell. Yeah. Well, there's going to be some surprises. <laughs> 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 Best Scannell and Cronin is probably what's expected. Okay. You can't argue with that, really. Yeah. Although Herring, if he had got an opportunity, I would imagine he would have been in the and mix. Then, mm. And then we've got, okay, we've got Toner, more than likely, uh, Henderson, yeah. Byrne, or, sorry, uh, James Ryan. James Ryan. <clears throat> uh, the, the three guaranteed second rows, and then it's Jean Klein, I would say, or Ty Byrne. Right, if Ty Byrne is going to the six, like, do you, what are your thoughts on? on well, idea? unless <clears throat> unless they're bumping, bringing, they're going to carry Jean and then take Ty possibly as a, as as a second row back mm. row cover. That would be my that would be my call. I think. Yeah, I, it'd be. I I didn't ex, I didn't expect them to to bring. If you consider Ty as as a lock, I didn't expect them to bring Toner Henderson. Um, James Ryan, John Klein, and Ty Byrne. I thought it would be it'd be four out of that five, mm -hmm. but maybe they're. But they're if they bring the fifth, if they bring Ty Byrne, then that means they can. They, they drop a back row. Yeah, mm. yeah. So that means maybe Tommy O'Donnell misses out, and maybe Jordy misses out. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I, I think. Um, or Roddick. Mm. I don't anyway. know. Yeah, and then you get to <clears> scrum <throat> halves. Obviously, we've said Marmion or, or Luke McGrath. It's, there's definitely going to be two, so it's going to be Connor and one of them. Then you get to tens. There's going to be three of them. I think Jack Carty did well enough that he's going to be the third choice, right? Yeah. Then it gets to the interesting part where Bundyaki, Ringrose, and Henshaw are three definites. Mm. And then Bundyaki mightn't have been a definite, but after the weekend, he's a definite. Yeah. And then you've Earl Z and Stockdale who are definites, and then it's probably. Two of, you would say Rob Carney is <coughs> definite, would you? Well, I would have <coughs> on the same thing on the same reckoning that I would have went with Rory Best being a definite as his captain. Devon Toner, I would consider being a definite, um, and I would consider Rob Carney mm -hmm. off the back of that. That's kind of the spine of your team as you're going through it, and mm -hmm. I would have expected those lads to go all the time. Okay, so so because because of how well Addison went, it wasn't a perfect performance, but how assured he looked at fullback, running the ball back. He looked mean. He, he, he? he looked class. Yeah. Does that make Carney any less definite, or does that just mean um, Larmer struggles there? I actually thought because because Bundyaki is so well equipped to play at twelve and thirteen, um, Robbie Henshaw can play twelve and thirteen as well, and I think Ringrose is your nailed on first choice thirteen starter. I thought I thought Chris Farrell has done really really well, and he showed that he can play at twelve and thirteen. I felt he didn't get as much time on the ball or as much space. I felt there was a little bit, I think Jack Carty's distribution at times checked Bundyaki, which meant, you know, I suppose Chris didn't get on the ball as much as he would have liked to in the game. But I think that you might look at Will Addison then as if you need a, Will Addison can cover 15. I thought I thought his kick, you know, he twice he got bundled into touch. Um, well, once he got bundled into touch, once he stepped into touch, which was pretty, which was, which was sloppy. But 
apart from that, he his evasion, his movement when he was getting the ball and running it back on kick returns was phenomenal. Yeah. And for for Stockdale's first try, he had a really nice take in the air, showed he's got a reasonably strong aerial game as well. So I thought he looked when he was running the ball back, he he looked so dynamic, so smooth, mm. and he got bundled in touch once or twice. I think it was that was a reflection of where he is at the minute. And he he needed one big performance, so he was rolling the dice. Hasn't mm. played in eight months. Yeah, you know, and and that that was a decent performance, having not played. Mm. So he would give you back tree cover and and cover at at thirteen as well. So that that could make it. <clears throat> it probably makes it hairy for someone like 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 Chris Farrell and then maybe Jordan or more as well. Like so, Conway's a definite now because he's gone so I well. I think he has to be. Yeah, you can't not bring him. No, I think himself. So that well. neither of them had perfect games of the weekend. I think that's what we're saying. Like they were, but it was the energy, <coughs> the intent that they brought, mm. um, that just gives them an edge for me at the moment that I think we're we're missing. Um, Conway's belief is unbelievable. It's it's his belief is unbelievable. <laughs> his his his, his self belief is something else. He's like. Uh, he really believes like it doesn't matter who you put him out against. Like he's so confident in in what he can do and his his prep. He's, he's matured massively in the last two years <coughs> as a player because I think anyone I, I had heard about him when he was coming out of Black Rock when I was in Munster. Just heard about this guy who was phenomenally strong, phenomenally powerful. You know, and I remember when he was playing with Leinster as a young lad. I remember uh, Owen Redden. Reds are reserved to send me. He said, I love playing with this guy because he just makes every box kick that I put up look unbelievable because he chases so hard. And he's made it, it's like that's literally the thing we were talking about there a couple of shows ago. He he has made this his point of difference. How good he is at getting into the contest in the air and putting pressure on the ball. Mm. Yeah, um, I think he's a shoe in now. So yeah. And it, it it would be what message would that send to the squad if like, Conway's been Ireland's best player this summer, mm -hmm. if he doesn't go, because Mm. First of all, he's good enough, but also mm. he's played out of his skin. And that leaves a tricky one there. <coughs> Chris Farrell, I think when you said there a second ago, right, he, he did get some sloppy ball and didn't get as many opportunities, uh, which is frustrating. A lot of people have said that he's potentially has taken himself out of the mix, which I think is very harsh because it's not like he did. He had that one drop ball, which I think mm. you, you'd excuse him for. Um, but the way the game was played, Aki got tons of ball and great opportunity and, and uh, a lot of good ball, um, quick ball and distrib distributed quite well from, from 9 to 10 times 12. So again, I've always seen Farrell as a 12. You stick him in the, in the same positions that Aki got at the weekend and you give him the opportunity to get his hands free and I think you see he would have probably potentially done even more damage. You know what I mean? So I think it's harsh enough to, to judge him on that. I would yeah. still... Love to see Chris Farrell go to the World Cup. I think mm. he's such so a weapon I, yeah. for us. Um, but at what cost? So we're saying now, <clears throat> Comey's definitely going. Mm -hmm. Addison, because of how, how well he played, he's definitely going. I know that's maybe not, but mm. we're, we're saying probably. Yeah. And then Carney's a, a definite. Is that what we're saying? If that's the case, then it's either Farrell or Larmer. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I, I <clears throat> still wouldn't be 100% sure on Carney even. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, it's as well as Ad Edison did so well at the weekend and yeah. I also think Conway could be uh, a very capable 15 as well if, yeah. if needs be um, well if Addison went well enough for him to be considered Joe's starter mm -hmm. then does that mean Carney's role is different yeah it does um, and I mean you need more of a, a Larmer than a Carney maybe I mean Larmer hasn't lit in the world on fire either for, for Ireland over the, over the last uh, while he's still doesn't have the experience that Conway has that I think gives Conway the edge over him. Um, and then, yeah, it's just a decision on whether yeah. he can offer more than Kearney off, off the bench. Or, yeah. Do you know yeah. if there's a huge jump <coughs> between Conway and Larmer experience-wise at, at, at test level? I don't think there is much between them. But I understand what you're saying, like Jordan Larmer is, is, is he's, he's younger. You've, yeah. you've changed the old pronunciation there, I noticed. <laughs> Lamore, when you died, have we? <laughs> I'm just not really sure. <laughs> Love me, no. <laughs> Jordan. What are you saying about Rob Kearney again? Um, no, I don't know. The two lads who uh, I think copper fastened their importance to the side were Dave Kilcoyne and James Ryan at the weekend. Mm. You know, we talked last week about the lack of physicality <clears throat> and characters and that kind of energy that we, we needed against England, and the two of them obviously unbelievable at the weekend. Kilcoyne had a massive game, and his yeah. carries were phenomenal. And uh, obviously the scrum was, was completely dominant. Yeah. But for, for, for all of the Irish front rows I played, when 
I thought when Furlong and Porter and Bess came on as well, they 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 ramped it up. Um, I, yeah, Irish scrum was really solid. Kilcoyne gave massive, punchy carries, and uh, he was just really really busy. Smashing everywhere. boys in defence as well. Yeah, yeah, he's <coughs> looks like he tackles with his face sometimes. You yeah. know, he just gets it's it's cause he's really really quick. He's really really powerful. He gets off the line so hard. He's just meeting. He's just meeting people over the gain line and yeah. still and stopping them dead. Uh, it was it was good to see. I thought I thought James Ryan and Kilcoyne coming in added a lot of ballast around that kind of momentum stopping as well. Um, so that was good because I don't think it was it wasn't in any way. I don't say you couldn't compare it in any way to the English to the English game and say well oh we've dealt with some of the issues from that game. Defensively, I don't think Ireland were ever really stretched off set keep, piece. I keep remembering Connell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It just keeps I know. Well. <laughs> Hellraiser just keeps coming back up. Um, but they, uh, but they, but they, but they, but they never really, you know, the, the Irish defence could always see what was coming. You know, they were never really massively stretched off a, off a first phase uh, at launch. <coughs> So they could see what was coming and they defended it quite well. I think when, when Jared Evans went off and Patchell came on, mm. they, there was a lot more energy in the Welsh game. They were different altogether, weren't they? Yeah, Patchell's yeah. Class. I think that's, that, that worried me then, like again, what, what, like what we've struggled with uh, against England, against Wales in, in the Six Nations is when we're stretched, I think, sometimes we get, we get quite narrow and it's actually, it's something I don't think we're great at doing an attack is where the nine to 10 pass is... Uh, is cutting out four or five defenders. Mm. And that's what Patchell was bringing, I think, on, on Saturday when he came on. He was starting relatively narrow, but then when the, when the pass was coming, he was taking three or four steps, taking out three or four defenders at one pass, and then they were, they were stretching us across the field and getting around us. And uh, I think we struggled massively with that because we were bringing line speed in the first three or four players, but then... Outside of that, it was uh, yeah. we're just falling off tackles. And, um, I think all on reverse of that, then we're we're getting really narrow in our attack. Would you have, have you ever have either you picked up on that? Our nine to ten pass is so short that um, I think that's why you don't see Farrell getting that kind of possession at the weekend. We don't see our thirteens uh, ever getting a huge amount of space and time on the ball because there's a uh, a lot of it is taken up with short runners and. Um, and short passes from nine to ten. I don't know. I, I thought I thought Jack Carty checked Bundyaki a couple of times. He, he, he checked him a couple of times, so that, so that would have that would have stopped the option of getting the ball to the thirteen with any bit of space. Um, what I did notice, I thought defensively Ireland's line speed was 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 much improved, and their connectivity in defence was 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 better. I don't think they were massively stretched by 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 the Welsh, but I thought that if you look at whenever the Irish forwards were taking the ball. They were generally always static. Mm. So if they played, particularly when they were playing inside their own half and they were trying to play through through a forward. So if they went nine to a forward to a sweep pass, that forward was always static. So then he would just get the ball and pivot and just pass the balls. And it's 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 real predictable where the idea of run catch run, where the players are always for, forwards are always running onto the ball. They catch the ball and then they either carry or else they pass. Mm -hmm. And that's something that they can that they can bring in. It's just we didn't get huge momentum. So if you've got momentum, you're generally running onto the ball every time and then you give the pass. When it's a bit more static and you're getting stopped on the gain line, you end up, the, the forwards are waiting for the ball then. So they get it and then if they go to carry, they're starting from a dead stop or else if they're pivoting to pass, they just turn their hips and, and mm. chuck the ball. What about uh, when we're closer to the Welsh line in the second half, how static we were taking those those carries? Yeah, I know there's a fine line between yeah, taking the ball at there, pace, you know? but... Um, I just feel we lost the ability to up the ante and just get really kind of explosive in our carries there and, and try and create a quick ball. It was just like, next carry, next mm. carry, next carry. I, I think we saw, uh, I was, I was going to say this actually, when Patchell came on <clears throat> defensively and with ball in hand, we, we, we lost a bit of energy. But I think that could be a reflection of where they're at in the, in the preseason because we talked about after the England game, they were knackered after just training really, really hard in uh, in Portugal for a week, and they looked knackered. And that was a reflection of how they played. I think they're just slightly, slightly less knackered or slightly fresher, and probably there's the emotional impetus of not performing well last weekend, so they got a bit of a backlash. But I still think they looked fresh for long periods, but get to sixty minutes, and then it just starts to fade a little bit. I think it'll be fresher again this weekend. 
Yeah. And I don't think you'll see that. I think you'll see more energy with their ball carriers, and I think you'll see more line speed yeah. in their defence as well. So I think Patchell, when he came on, that coincided with Ireland just started to lose a bit of energy. Mm. The game was very scrappy in the second half yeah. as well, wasn't it? It was just kind of mm. took ten minutes to get a scrum sorted, and uh, after forty-eight minutes, or something yeah. that was very frustrating. Uh, the Spa. Welsh scrum is going to be a, is going to be an issue for them at the World Cup. The Welsh scrum. The Welsh scrum. What was your take on that? When when uh, <coughs> was it as as? Well, yeah, Ireland, Ireland were dominant. I thought yeah. the Irish uh, like I. What I was really impressed. Uh, Leon Brown. Leon Brown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he was. Oh, I actually my. <laughs> I felt so sorry for him because yeah. he was just one of those ones. He was like, "What do I have to do here?" And you could just see his World Shut Cup shot. Yeah, you're ruining my World Cup. <laughs> I, know. Yeah. Yeah. I know. But the, the the Welsh scrum, I think, like Welsh have so many technically really good players, but they're going out. I think Samson Lee has been admitted from their squad, so they're going out with Thomas Francis and Dylan Lewis probably as as their their their, their, their one of them is going to be their first choice tight end going in. Um, Wynne Jones, I think Rob Evans has been admitted as well. Nicky Smith is in there. I think they've that's that's somewhere that they they that they, they could struggle. You know, I thought the Irish, if you look at how well Greg Feek has drilled the Irish scrum, like there was so little foot movement on the bind, and there were this is real rugby nerd scrum mm-hmm. stuff, but they were so powerful across the line and there was like any time there was any foot movement from Ireland, it was only to go forward. Whereas the Welsh scrum, they were adjusting their feet an awful lot. They were starting to lose shape. And even when it looked like the scrum was going down, Ireland would regain shape again through their front row and the back five held their uh, held their their position and punched them through that. It was How impressive is it of Porter to move across the front row and still be dominant? Yeah, he was... Uh, it's just... It's it's so hard. Like, he... he when I watched him play in their 20s and I thought he was phenomenal. Um, just because he was just physically so much more powerful than everyone else. Then, obviously, um, John Fogarty and Leo Cullen moved him across the tight head, um, probably in conjunction with, with, Greg, with Craig Feek, uh, which is a really, really hard position to learn again. Again, he's physically, <coughs> he's just so powerful and at, at, to be at such a young age to, ha- to have that much uh, athletic capability and then just to come back across again to Lucet is again, is, is super impressive. He's going to be such an asset for Ireland going forward. Um, he was decent at the weekend, yeah. Mm. Spat, um, <laughs> you, had a, you had a comment from uh, one of our penguins about the the loophole in the law, was it, for the, 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 the jump tackle? Yeah, a lot of people were talking about that as well. And Because um, remember, I think did Sinclair, got, he got a penalty, didn't he, on the, the Lions tour as well. Mm. You're just jumping, taking the ball as well. And then it was actually um, Chris Cusseter, you know, the former... Uh, Scotland scrum half yeah. he tweeted about it I thought that was a good kind of take on it uh, Custer said uh, watching Wales versus Ireland this is a loophole in the laws that needs changed if someone jumps to catch a pass it's unfair to expect the defender not to tackle them they could do it from uh, five metres out from a try line to win penalties all day uh, thought. so this is the Bundiaki mm. tackle on James Davies that saw that ring rose try ruled out well it did happen in the Argentina South Africa match a few weeks ago isn't it you were saying earlier that's on about, yeah. that's about but that that was I, I thought I thought Roman Poit was was good in the game. Roman yeah. Poit said yeah. like said he was jumping to catch the ball. He wasn't running to jump into the tackle. Yeah. Whereas when I watched the Etzebet one uh, in when in the box versus Argentina a few weeks ago, Etzebet jumped into the tackle. I think he jumped into the tackle twice. And it wasn't like the ball was up in the air like no. uh, like yeah, the man had to jump. I think the problem with with Aki at the weekend is that he had time to see that he was in the air, but he still tackled him. Mm. Whereas when he when he was coming down. Whereas with Etzebet, actually, he could have caught it without jumping. But, but James, like James jumped. Davis uh, didn't have to jump either. Did he not? He could have. He could have caught that standing, but he knew he was going to get hit hard. So it was. Okay, ta- I think right. it was tactical from him. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. there's the difference between. Like, you remember we were talking about uh, that thing about getting into the contest when you're going for the ball in the air. You want to. You want to actually launch at a 45 degree, so you have momentum going into it rather than just trying to jump vertically. I think that's the difference. Is that like if you're running. And you're going to catch a, catch a pass, and it's a, say it's a poor pass, but you're jumping into the tackle versus you're jumping upwards to catch the pass. Do, do you get yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, no, I, 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 I know yeah. your man was probably aware. He was yeah. aware that he was going to get 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 a shot put on him by Bundyaki, but I don't think he was actually trying to get that and, and make it harder for Bundyaki to tackle him by jumping into the tackle. Well, he's he probably was. just trying to defend himself a little bit. So yeah. Yeah, obviously, if you're if he catches the ball here. Then Bundy's going to go through him. I thought Poit dealt with it dealt with it well at the weekend. Yeah. Mm. But there, it is a little bit of a loophole. I it think Custer is right. Yeah. Anyway, 
We're not going to solve it. No, we won't. We'll move on. Uh, any, uh, anyone you'd like to see come in for the weekend? Ireland versus Wales. Last night of our Leaving Cert holiday. More uh, players with stronger facial hair. Pews. No. Henshaw. Sexton, Sexton Murray. Earls. Murray. Sexton. Um, Sexton for sure, yeah. I'd like mm -hmm. to see... Um, I see Sexton. I, th I thought Tyg Furlong was really good when he came on at the mm, weekend. Yeah. Um, just want to see those, those the guys that you kind of generally count on, like he's going to give us a minimum seven or eight out of ten mm. everything he's having plays, just to see them getting in. And ideally, you'd like to see Joe being able to play the spine of the team that he wants to play against Scotland again. Uh, I'd imagine injuries, if injuries aren't aren't an issue, that he can he'll, he'll go pretty much the spine of the team. Because he's got his squad selected now. So yeah. whatever's going into Scotland is, is going to play against Wales. Yeah. Yeah. For you. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay, quick one on Felix Jones. Uh, big opportunity for him signing for uh, the Springboks or joining the, the coaching ticket there as a defence coach, which surprised me because he's been a backs coach for Munster for three or four years. What are your thoughts on that? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure what... what about the defensive side of it. I, although the thing is, that Felix, Felix coached the attack in Munster for the last few years, mm -hmm. last three years, but he also, um, he also like when, when, when Rassi and Jacques left, Felix took over our, our kicking game as well and he took over our exits. So he's, you know, we had like five coaches when Axel was there and then we went down to, went down to pretty much three with Johan as well. So Felix was, had, had quite a lot in his plate. He was covering an awful lot. So I think, I think the box can employ him whichever way they want and he, they'll get a lot of value from him. He's a phenomenal coach. Mm. Um, I think of what he did with, with Munster was pretty, pretty incredible. Like, people, people were quite critical of, uh, of Munster's attack towards the end of last year, but you just have to look at it. Like, w before Felix came in, I think we scored 56 tries in the league. The following year, under Felix's first year, I think we scored 77. The following year, we scored 78. The following year, we scored maybe 82. The only teams that were finished ahead of us in, in, in the attack were Leinster and Glasgow. So gives you an idea. And I didn't see Leinster exactly ripping Saracens apart in the, in the final. So, yeah, I think Felix is... There'd probably be a lot made of the fact that, that Felix knows the Irish team and knows the players, but... Teams are doing enough. Rassi knows them anyway. Doesn't yeah, they? yeah. Rassi mm. would know them already. It's it's the the big thing is that is that the box have got got themselves a phenomenal coach. You know, like he was, he was thirty years of age coaching the attack in Munster as mm. the youngest attack coach you could have in probably in in elite European rugby. Just in terms so. of hard work, like there's no guy out there that will work harder than Felix. Like keep no. his head down. Um, it is a clever chess move from from. Uh, from Rassi as well, like it's like, oh yeah, we'll yeah. We will take Felix, absolutely. And we'll stick him in our coach and take it. Like it's it just the second you heard it, you were like, yeah, what, but a they, great, they were, what a like, great move. Like Felix, you have to, if you put it in context, like Felix, Felix played with Leinster. He came down to Munster. He captained Munster when he played at Munster. Mm. He came in, he coached Munster. He was 30 years of age. Um, 30 years of age coaching the attack. Like attack is probably the hardest area to coach. Mm. And uh, he did a phenomenal job with it, and uh, and I think Rassi had contacted him a good few times about leaving Munster, and he didn't. He, he refused every time, and uh, it just happened then that at this stage he he had he had decided to leave Munster uh, this summer, so he, he was he, he didn't have a coaching gig, and uh, when Sois de Bruyne got got uh, was was taken ill, it just made sense then to bring him in because I suppose Felix is going to know Jacques Ninarbre, he's going to know Rassi, he's going to know Alad, and he'll be able to slot in straight away. Whereas if if you have to look at trying to get a coach in from somewhere else, you're like, is he going to work in the coaching setup? Is he going to be able to get up to speed? Whereas uh, I think the box, Rassi's philosophy on rugby, it won't have changed massively from when he was at Munster. So Felix will slot straight in there, and uh, I think it it gives us two horses to back now a little bit, you know, you, you're looking for Ireland to go as far as they can in the World Cup and you've also got Felix Jones as an Irishman coaching with the box, so it gives us another team to support. Good call. Is it a short term thing then? It's only until the end of the World Cup, is it? I think it's I think it's just on a consultancy basis that he's coming in there. But whether it goes beyond that, we'll see. Yeah. But it's 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 good it's good to have another guy coaching, another young Irish coach out there 
coaching like at a World Cup it's phenomenal like he's got yeah. international experience now so well one of the main reasons I want to talk about this because I've been waiting a year to be able to to get this story on this show about Felix Jones uh, so now that we've gotten that out of the way can we get to the, <laughs> to the, the good stuff so Trimby you and Felix were quite good mates when he played together was it yeah, after we 2000 were, we were, 2011 we, tour of Argentina you went on? Um, no, no, no. It was after. It was... 2014, uh, I think, wasn't it? 2014. Yeah. It was that one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we, we were good mates, but then he obviously hates animals, so I, uh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Why does he hate animals? Yeah, he, he just hates <laughs> endangered species. Really? That's what he does, yeah. Okay, tell so us the then, story. Uh, anyway, so we got in bother. I went to... We both had a week after... After tour finished, and um, we decided we would go to Machu Picchu and do that um, that gap year, gap year thing. So yeah. we had we booked this trail. It wasn't um, the Inca Trail; it was the Lores Trail, a fraction of the price. <laughs> <So> <laughs> <laughs> all the way to Peru and do like the cheap one. Yeah. Uh, but um, anyway, so we end up being quite good mates with uh, our um, our guide out there. Armando was his name. And he came into that we were we were camping in this valley in the middle of nowhere, and he came in all excited one night into the tent and grabbed us and brought us around. And he goes, "We you see this, we you see this," and um, they brought us in. And there was this um, farmer with this um, taxidermy species, um, <laughs> and he was like, "This was his pride and joy." And the backstory to this was this farmer. He was a llama farmer, and this uh, puma had been um, you know picking off his llama. <laughs> Terrorizing his farm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he <clears throat> got himself a rifle, like hunt this, hunted this thing down, got it eventually. It, it it had already killed like two or three of his llama. So it's like you know, fair game. This guy hasn't got much going for himself. I didn't see too many llama. <laughs> 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 Not too many left. So he hunted this um, cougar, caught it, shot it, brought it back, and stuffed it. And this um, cougar or puma was its his pride and joy. So he was like, got on the mantelpiece. Like. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to get a picture with us. So, um, uh, so we got a picture with it. And then um, Felix, when we got signal a day or two later, um, so we had plenty of time to think about it. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't rush it. <laughs> 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 he um, put put the picture out and tweeted, uh, it. tweeted it out and said, um, "Thanks very much to Mary and John for having a shrine for barbecued puma." <laughs> <laughs> So people... The picture of you holding... Uh, people lost their minds. The puma yeah. with Mary and John either side with so it's, their happy little faces. Yeah, uh, yeah, they were delighted. We were delighted at the time because we didn't realise the backlash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, it was, it was Felix's idea. Right. <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so you jump on a flight back to Ireland. Yeah, we jump on a flight back to Ireland and as we arrive... All hell broke loose. <laughs> so you've got a, a yeah. he's got a newspaper clipping here from I think it's the Irish Independent, is it? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> the headline was Rugby Stars Dismissed Dead Puma Photo as Prank After Online Fury. <laughs> 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 that is a picture of us holding the cougar or the puma. I think the same thing. Yeah. Anyway, um uh, it looked like it's so like a dead puma that even PETA, PETA, uh, the International Animal Rights Organization, had called on local authorities to investigate the circumstances surrounding a picture posted online by Felix, the the animal hater Jones, <laughs> the monster out in rugby. He's going pair. to the right place in South Africa, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Over hunting. Uh, um, the fullback uploaded the image to his Twitter account on Thursday. It featured himself and Andrew Trimble, the Ulster and Ireland winger, holding the animal, accompanied by two locals. Two locals, huh? A uh, bit racist. <laughs> <laughs> How do they know they're locals? Anyway, um, uh, uh, holding the animal accompanied by two locals. The tweet read, big thanks to Mary and John who had us over for barbecue puma. <laughs> <laughs> Following considerable online anger, Jones removed the picture from his Twitter page last night and explained that it had all been a prank. <laughs> Apologies for any misunderstanding caused by my tweet. He said the photo was of a taxidermy specimen. We did not kill or eat any puma. <laughs> Barbecued <laughs> puma. Yeah, so oh, he, he, he put it to bed with that follow-up uh, apology. My favourite is like, that's a that's a good full-page spread of an article in the paper. Yeah. And the first bit is the bones of the story. And then whoever the journalist is went on to explain mm -hmm. how endangered pumas were in the area. And then at the end, <laughs> was like, and not only... Is that bad enough? But Ireland had just come from playing the Pumas, uh -huh. and <laughs> Ireland's jerseys are yeah. made by Puma. Yeah. It was like, oh my God! They just googled Puma, and they were like, oh, that's yeah. a wee angle. Oh, 
brilliant. Oh, it was great. Anyway, we were freaking out at the time. Yeah, you can but. just imagine Felix now as, a, as like one of those dentists in, in Africa that's just shot a giraffe. Yes, yeah. Like a big o obese dentist who's just shot a giraffe. And the world just loses its mind. Yeah, anyway, it was all... Oh, that's great, man. I love it. Well, congratulations to Felix. Um, just on that, uh, Dianti facing a four-year ban for, for getting... Uh, drugs. Getting drugs. <laughs> yeah. For getting caught. Which he denied ever taking any prohibited substance. Obviously, you would deny it, but um, yeah, that's a bit of a shock. Uh, just thoughts on that? Jeez, they're all out of, don't they? Do you reckon? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Felix is going to come back from South Africa, 115 kilos. <laughs> ripped. <laughs> ripped uh, right, we'll be back at black and white uh, in a moment, and Jerry is calling the shots. Right, lads, it's time to play black and white. Everyone knows that a pint of Guinness is the perfect excuse to bring friends together, but on this week's House of Rugby, we have a statement so shocking, so contentious, that it might tear the house apart. Baz. Andrew, Andrew, you're going to be arguing for this statement. Baz, you're going to be arguing mm. against. James Haskell is serious about pursuing a career in MMA and is not doing this purely for attention and to stay relevant in the media. There's 60 seconds on the clock. The current yes. score is Andrew 3, Baz 1. I got this one. Okay, so Baz, you're arguing against. Okay, 60 so seconds. So he's serious. He, you think he's serious. That's the statement. So the he's statement. Serious. I didn't I'm not. I'm. I'm I'm impartial. Is he serious? So I'm saying he's not. He's not serious about taking it up. He's okay. Go. Clock started. Yeah. Go. Yeah. I mean, what do we know? Brand Haskell. That's been there since day one. He had his own website. Like after a week of playing rugby, um, didn't he marry Richard from Richard and Judy's daughter, or both of their daughters, <laughs> <laughs> to just to get on the show? And they didn't even have he him on. Married both of they did both their daughters, just in case one of them wasn't famous enough, <laughs> yeah. just to get on the show. And I don't even think they get him on the show. Didn't he like drive a tank to get breakfast last week or something like that? Yeah. Or someone to give him a free breakfast and they didn't even have it. So now he's like going to pretend like he likes MMA, but he's just going to get his head kicked in. Okay, well, for me, um, James Haskell is the salt of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> he does everything. He's quiet, unassuming, does not attract any unnecessary attention to himself. He did all those things with a genuine heart and a concern for the bigger picture. <laughs> so he did. <laughs> he is concerned. Here's an example. He's concerned about the big issues in rugby, for example. Okay. Squirting water in people's faces. He's like the William Wilberforce of rugby. <laughs> he stands up for what's right. <laughs> and have you ever seen anybody get squirted water in their face since? since? Because he stamped that issue out. Now he's concerned about stamping some uh, some issue <laughs> What's his in issue MMA. In MMA? He wants to stamp someone's face out. That's what he wants to do. And he's going to stamp your face out whenever he hears you talking crap about his uh, mother and father-in-law. <laughs> okay. Just time? Just, yeah. Just give it to him. Just give it to him. Uh, a good contest. I think... Based on your stuttering towards the end, I'm going to give this one to Baz. I did stutter. I did stutter. He did stutter a lot. You're so. clutching. You're clutching a dick. So Baz, this is you. <laughs> Thank no you. sweet smell of success for you this week. You smell, you smell differently this week. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two. Yes. Well done, lads. Thank yeah. you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Enjoy, enjoy your sympathy pint. I will. <laughs> Sorry, James Haskell. <laughs> Right, thanks everybody for listening in all your favorite apps and for those of you watching us on YouTube, hello. Uh, cheers to everyone that was involved in making the show this week, to uh, Alan, Fiona, Pat, and of course, Anthony. This has been Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby here on Joe, together with Guinness. Party on. Party on. Party on.